Well, the consumer has been the bright spot of this economy all year, and that theme also continues today. Costco and Lululemon putting up some impressive same-store sales results. Lulu shares surging as much as uh, now 7%. Joining me is Brian Nagel. He's senior equity research analyst at Oppenheimer. And Brian, you know, when Lululemon grows its sales 15% year-on-year, we know they're clearly doing something right. But does that also tell you from the rest of your coverage uh, universe that there's strength here for the U.S. consumer? Well, look, Kelly, I think that's a good question. Um, I mean, no question that Lulu is really one of the best performing brands out there right now. And there's a lot of things that the company is doing internally to drive those results. But as I look at, as I look at the, 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 the figures that Lulu reported last night, there's clearly also an element of what I consider to be a very, still very healthy consumer backdrop. Yeah, so let's talk about the reasons why. I mean, for Lululemon, it was the men's business in particular. Um, but, but then you have a, one like Costco. It's putting up a 5.5% increase in same-store sales in August. So if we're going to see a slowdown, if we're going to see a tariff hit, I mean, where should we be looking for that to show up? Well, I mean, look, I'll, I'll start by saying I, I, you know, I follow a, a, a wide array of, of, of retailers and brands, and I'm not seeing it. You know, hmm. the, we're talking about two data points here, Lululemon and Costco. You know, I get this question from our clients. I go back to the July retail sales report from the government, which showed improving trends from June. We had Walmart's results, which were very solid, and a number of other companies. In fact, the only the only way the only uh, time or the only piece of sales weakness I've seen lately is maybe in the month of May when the weather wasn't really cooperating. But other than that, I, across the board, I see indications that the consumer is really performing quite well here. So. To answer your question, you know, I, we, I look at the fringes. You know, I, I, I think I've made this comment on your show before, yeah. but I talk to my retailers. I look at the results. I look for choppy patterns. You know, are there indications that the consumer is starting to pull back in funny ways? I'm not seeing that at all right now. All right. I mean, that's, that's pretty clear from a guy who looks at this stuff very closely. So before I let you go, your thoughts on Lululemon specifically. Your price target is $225. What are they doing right? Well, look, if I step back and say, you know, what's, what's really happening in Lulu? And in my mind, this is a company that's evolving from just a few years ago. It was really a, a yoga brand. You know, a yoga brand focused on a relatively small portion of the population. They are morphing into a leading athleisure brand. You know, you mentioned a second ago they're, they're going after the men's business. They're doing that very successfully. They're continuing to grow well in their core markets in North America, so the United States and Canada. I'm in Europe right now. It's becoming a bigger brand over here in Europe and a big push into Asia. So I really think over time we're going to be talking more and more about Lululemon as we talk about like a Nike. Hmm. This is really leading, powerful athleisure brand. Yeah, and developing uh, water-resistant wool quite well. <laughs> quite well. Uh, that's, that's what right. I've learned today. Brian, thanks very much. Appreciate your time.